Now, the title of this video is that they're going to stop us trying to live off grid in the UK. So I'm going to run through it uh, in a bit more detail in a minute. But basically, for as long as I can remember, there's been an allowance in planning laws in the UK, which I've gone over quite a few times, called the four year rule. So basically, if you buy some woodland or some land out in the country and you're able to build a modest dwelling where you're not seen and you don't get reported to the planners and you manage to live there four years full time and you can prove it, then you can, you, uh, you can apply for a certificate of lawfulness. Now it has to be a dwelling, it has to be something permanent, it can't be shipping containers, static caravans because that comes under the 10 year rule. Now I've done a video on the four year and 10 year rule that I'll put in the description. If you've not seen that, watch it. But what we're discussing just now is how the government is intending on stopping this. Okay, so I'll go and sit in my, my wee cabin and we'll run. <laughs> folks so as I was just saying out in the bothy so the UK government um, has just gone through Parliament they're going to be changing the certificate of lawfulness in the UK now initially it's going to be an English law has been made up by Westminster and what they're doing is they're abolishing the four-year certificate of lawfulness they're not abolishing the 10-year rule certificate of lawfulness so if you're planning on doing this and moving off grid and building a dwelling um, basically you're still going to be able to do it but rather than being able to apply for your certificate of lawfulness after four years you're going to have to wait for 10 years. Now as of yet Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland has no intention of um, taking on this new law, it's just part of England but as with anything the devolved governments, their planning policies are pretty much based on English planning law. So they basically follow it, like in Scotland, um, their planning policy seems to follow England six or seven years later. Wales make up their own rules. Um, it's very loosely based on the, the UK government's planning rules, but Wales has different takes on things. You know, Scotland is generally a much more toned down version of like the English planning pol policy, although if you read it, a lot of the words are the same, a lot of the sizes of buildings and permitted developments are very, very similar. But with Scotland, it generally follows quite a few years later. They, they look at what map assessments does past and it goes through Holyrood and it just they digest it at a slower pace and implement it later. So this abolishing the four year certificate of lawfulness, I would think it will probably come in in Scotland and Wales, but in seven or eight years time. But in England, it's coming in, I believe in September or October this year. It's not, If you, you can Google it, you can go on to Google. I did put a link on my Lock North Smithy Facebook page and on the community section of our YouTube channel sharing this post. Quite a lot of people didn't like it. It didn't go down well on one of the off-grid uh, Facebook groups, but it's not a policy I've made up. I'm just telling you what the UK government's doing. So they're trying to stop everybody building houses without planning permission. The main reason is, in the, the video I did last time, there was a significant case with a guy called Robert Fiddler. Um, he pretended to own a farm, he had a lorry business, he'd been turned down for planning permission for a house several times and he decided to build a castle. And rather than sorting it out quietly, he decided to fight the government, try and get his four year certificate of lawfulness that he wasn't entitled to because he'd hidden it. They did make a change in planning policy immediately then. And basically he just highlighted the loopholes in the law to all the media, the newspapers, the Daily Mail especially, who they pretend to be a good newspaper, but they're just as bad as the sun, they just, they just make up drivel. Um, they really took on his case. I think he thought they were an ally of his, but they weren't, they just stirred up trouble. So basically it highlighted to the UK government how many people were building houses, building dwellings off-grid in the country and using this loophole. I think the government didn't really realise it was happening because 
why would they? You know, it's, it's local planners have to administer this and, and issue these certificates of lawfulness. So this is what's happening. At the moment, they're abolishing the four-year certificate of lawfulness. I could see them abolishing the 10-year one in the future. It's a, it's a bit at a time, isn't it? But if you're three and a half years into living in a cabin in the woods and you're in England, it's going to be a major blow for you that you're not going to be able to get that certificate of lawfulness. Now, well, for another six years. But the thing is, if you're doing it right and you're living quietly, um, why apply for certificate of lawfulness? You know, if you if you're being quiet and you're not making a nuisance of yourselves, so people report you, you could just continue to live the way you are. You know, at the end of the day, there was very few evictions of people off their own land. There's been a few like there was a there was one down near London. Um, where a gypsy camp all got evicted, it was called Dale Farm, and but the thing is, they had multiple time, uh, multiple chances to sort that out. The planners, they they got chance to apply for retrospective planning permission, but the thing is, most of those people didn't either didn't understand or didn't um, want to apply for retrospective planning permission for some reason. On that side, I don't think there was any applications for retrospective planning permission for what they were doing. So in the UK, there's very few evictions. You know, where there is, the media really take it up, like Robert Fiddler's case, that they made him demolish his home. But all the people that are living in caravans or on small holdings, most of them eventually navigate the, the planning rules by starting a small business or applying for retrospective planning permission or getting a certificate of lawfulness. You don't see many of these actually getting evicted off their own land. Um, you know, I'm sure somebody will prove, prove me right and drop a link in one of the comments, but it is f fairly rare. So if this is something you're looking at doing, you can still do it, it just takes longer. I think the main thing to take from this, if you're gonna live off grid, there's no, no major advantage of building like a permanent log cabin on permanent concrete foundations to actually just pull in static caravan on where you've got less risk and you know, if you've got into trouble, you could just sell it again. So everything's gonna be treated the same. It's all gonna be 10 years. So um, yeah, not a very exciting video. Um, not great news for a lot of people. You know, when I put this on Facebook, I know a couple of people said, we're nearly at four years, what happens to us? Well, the thing is, if you can get to the four years before they actually bring this in, then of course, um, I would get your application for certificate of lawfulness in sharpish and get your proof together. A lot of people do succeed with certificate of lawfulness. Um, but yeah, that's what's happening. The, the government's trying to stop us. Um, we all knew this was gonna happen, especially, you know, in England, the price of houses, the price of land is much higher, so you've got a lot more to gain by building a house without planning permission, haven't you? And something I did, I did make aware, people were aware of on Facebook, where this rule is really getting abused is in London and cities, you know, like Bristol, where landlords are buying big buildings, big houses, and what they're doing, this doesn't really affect anybody um, who's off grid, but I just thought I'd explain it. A lot of landlords are buying big houses, big buildings. They're applying for something called a HMO license. So they were applying to convert that building into a house of multiple occupation, so bed sets, where they've got some sort of shared facility so they don't need planning permission. So they're applying to convert them to get the certificate, uh, this HMO license. They're making, say, a building into 12 flats, basically. They're putting them on the council tax register renting them out to people and then at some point they s separate the facilities so if they've all been sharing a bathroom to make it HMO so you don't need planning they're then giving them all a toilet each making them into studio flats or one bed flats and after four years they've got a tenancy agreement proving that somebody's lived in that flat for, t for four years they've got council tax bills and they, they will have um, a letter from the the district valuer proving that that was entered into the town council tax register. They'll be able to get electric bills if they ask for them off the tenants. And they'll also have rents coming in. 
even if they haven't been paying the rent, they'll have rent statements where they've been charging rent, chasing for rent, they might even have court papers for eviction. So after four years, these landlords are managing to get a certificate of lawfulness on all these individual flats without having to go through the building regs, the planning permission, all that expensive rigmarole. And then they're able to divide this building into multiple flats on the title deeds and sell them off and make colossal profits. So this is really what the government's trying to stop. They're also trying to stop people like Robert Fiddler, but there's a lot of landlords in London. Um, I know landlords that have done it. I know a guy that did it in Stranra. He wasn't local, he was from Cambridge. He wasn't a very nice person. And he did it on several buildings. Um, he got away with it on two buildings in Stranra, and the third one, which is on the edge of town, Fourfield Court, he was nearly, he was nearly at the stage he could do it, and the council had had enough of him, and they served him um, with a prohibition notice that he couldn't rent the building out. They went in and assessed all his flats, and because they weren't up to building regs, they hadn't got hardwired smoke alarms, and there was some damp, they shut him down, and they stopped him. So it's not just planning where they're trying to stop these landlords doing this, you know, other government agencies are trying to stop it as well because they are, they're, they're abusing vulnerable people for the cause. So they're using people generally that are vulnerable and on benefits to pay the rent on these units and then use them to get the certificate of lawfulness, which, you know, we all have a different opinion on that. But anyway, that's what's going on. So from September in England, there'll be no four year um, and one day certificate lawfulness. You'll need to do 10 years. If you're looking to go off grid, move to Wales or Scotland, I'd say, because um, you'll probably have time to, to get it done before the planning laws change. There's no, there's no plan for it to change in England or Scotland just now, but I think it will do. And it'll probably be in one of these revisions of all their planning policies. So anyway, if you found that useful, uh, give the video a thumbs up. Um, drop us a comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out that other video I did on the four year and one day and ten year and one day certificate lawfulness. The ten year and one day bit is still relevant, the four year and one day bit is still relevant to everywhere apart from England. So thank you folks and we'll see you again.